Hey guys, Leash here. I'm so excited to be able to share with you Jasmine Bernard's case story. She is an amazing therapist who started her career in a slightly different way, has been able to create amazing things in her business. She's going to share with you where she was before she started working with us, and then she's going to share what she put in place and where she is now as a result of the coaching that she's done with us over the last sort of eight to nine month period. Often when people are watching these, they can be starting to think, well, you know, where am I in my business and what is it that I'm looking for and how can I grow and take it to the next level? I can't wait to share this story with you. I know you're going to get lots out of it and I look forward to seeing you towards the end of the case study. Hey guys, we have the delightful Jasmine with us today, sharing a bit about her business from Melbourne Muscle Medics. Uh, welcome, Jasmine. It's great to have you with us. Hi. Uh, would you like to share a little bit about your business, who you help, what you do? Um, we'd love to hear a bit about and where Rats are located in the world as well. Yeah, so Melbourne Muscle Medics is in Cranbourne, Melbourne, uh, in Australia. And we, we, we're we quite a big team at the moment. Currently, at this time of the recording, I've got 10 therapists uh, in the clinic. And so we help quite a wide variety of different clients because uh, each therapist has their own kind of speciality and niche. So we've got quite a, a wide variety of people. Um, probably our main ones are your tradies, your desk workers, uh, and your sports people. Uh, so quite, a, quite an active kind of client base most of the time. Fantastic. Yeah. And Jasmine, how long have you been running the clinic? Um, so I started massaging, I think about six or seven years ago, I started off just myself uh, renting a room in a gym. Um, I was working in there as a personal trainer. And I said to the owner, I was like, hey, if I get qualified at massage, will you rent me a room? And she was like, yep, sure. Why not? Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to touch people for a living. So I started off with a weekend course in relaxation massage and then started doing that. Um, went to the room, did, did my thing, um, started doing it for, I was doing that for about a year. Um, and then I did a few other little short courses as well, just to kind of increase my skills. And then I was like, okay, I've been doing this for nearly two years now. My clients are asking for private health rebates. I should get myself qualified. So when I did my diploma, um, shortly after I did my diploma, I hired my first therapist. Uh, and then the gym decided that I was doing really well and they put my rent up and I was like oh yeah that's that's not gonna work so at that same time we moved house and so we found the perfect house where I could work from home so me and my one staff member we went to the house and uh, we worked out of the front of the house and I managed to grow that team at the front of my house to there was four of us in total at the the biggest point of working from home I worked from home for about four years and just recently, so I've now been in this new clinic for three months. We moved into a commercial space. We now have five treatment rooms and 10 therapists. Amazing. So, it's yeah. so phenomenal. I love hearing your journey and your story. It's it's what a lot of therapists really want. Uh, it's like one of those things that people are just like, oh, I really want to have a big team and a big clinic. And the fact that you've just been out of go, just jump straight out of the gate and do it is just absolutely awesome. So we first started speaking to one another about nine or 10 months ago now, and we'd spoken a little while earlier before. Um, what were you, what was happening in your business for you to start to look into coaching? What was it that you were looking for? What was happening or what wasn't happening that you really wanted to? Um, you started showing up on my Facebook feed. So I wasn't even really looking for coaching initially. And you just, you just appeared in my face and I was like, what's that? So I watched a couple of your little webinars and I was like, well, you know, I have never done any kind of business course or business training. I am making this all up as I go along. Um, all I know is I don't want to work for someone else. And so I just put my logic brain on and just, I'm making it all up. Um, so I kind of got to the point of, I'm. Um, hiring staff, I have all these big goals, I want to make sure that I'm getting there correctly. Um, so inquired after one of your webinars into the coaching, you told me the price and I was like, nah. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um, so went and found another business coach and worked with him for six months, who was significantly cheaper than uh, <laughs> the Massage Champions program. Uh, in that six months, I could not tell you what I got out of working with that coach. We had a few decent conversations, but especially if you were looking at the financial side of the business, there was no improvement whatsoever. Um, so I 
kind of fired that coach. Not well. I used COVID as a really good excuse to stop my coaching with him. I was like, I've got no income. I can't afford you. Uh, we'll have to stop coaching. Uh, and then went back to seriously consider Massage Champions again because I really liked this the, the what I'd heard of the program. I'd written my pros and cons list and the main con was price. And so I'm like, well, I better just, you know, invest money and uh, give, give it a go. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad I did. So that's beautiful and good. <laughs> Hence why we're doing this case study. Uh, what were some of the, like, what was the differences for you when you first joined the program? What did you notice that was either something different that you'd experienced before? And what did you do that started to change the needle for you in your business? Um, I think the main difference I initially went with this other coach because I thought he's got nothing to do with the massage industry. So he's my ideal client. He's, you know, he should be able to tell me how I would advertise to him and get people like him into the clinic. Um, so that was why I went with it. But then the fact that he had no idea of what the massage industry was like, I feel like he couldn't relate too well to the business. So the fact that you are a massage therapist and you have so much experience um, just gave me a lot of confidence that you actually knew what you were talking about. Um, you've got this, you know, proven results um, that I knew that I could, I could trust. So there was definitely that trust factor there initially that helped. So the one of the other things that I struggled with the with this particular business coach that I had chosen is he didn't have any, um, he didn't have a logo, he didn't have a website, he didn't have a social media presence. So the fact that I found you guys on social media and a lot of my clients already come from social media, I'm like, huh, you know how to work it, you know how to use the system, so I can kind of you know copy what you're doing to get myself in front of people. Um, so since working with you guys, I've been able to put in a few new systems in place. Um, it really helped helps that I've got an admin and I've just been able to go here watch this video take what you can from it and you know put, put these things in place so that we can actually see the growth that's come from that particular training um, but one of the one of the main things is that I've, that I've gotten out of this program is actually from the retreats um, the the planning day so we all know that we're meant to set goals and um, you know set tasks to then achieve those goals and we all know that we're meant to do it, but then we never do. So the fact that we actually sit down for a whole day and we write down those goals and then we write down steps that we're going to you know, take to get us towards those goals, that's been one of the most valuable things for me. Um, and I've actually been able to measure, have I been reaching these goals and, and actually see success? I think with the other coach, I didn't really have any way to measure anything because we didn't do any of that kind of stuff. So the setting goals was really one of the big things for me. Yeah, nice. And so you now have a much bigger team. Um, on average, how, do you remember how many clients you were seeing before, you know, kind of eight, seven or eight months ago now? Bearing in mind, it was definitely we were coming out of COVID and all the all the fun things that happened in 2020. And so yeah. now this can be a little bit skewed. I was seeing nothing and now we're at 5 million. Is not quite an accurate uh, indication of what we have helped you with at all. Pretty much. Give us a bit of a, because I, I know that you know your numbers and your data. Um, do you remember roughly where you were pre-COVID-ish and where you're sitting at the moment in terms of client numbers? So I did write a little list in preparation for this meeting, but I didn't actually write down the number of clients that we were seeing. I only wrote down financial like um, dollar figures. So back pre-COVID, I was on average, there were four of us therapists working from the front of the house. On average, we were pulling in about 10 grand a month um, was kind of gross income uh, with the four of us. Then COVID just made everything go. We were closed and, you know, ridiculously quick rush, get your appointment while you still can. And COVID just went a little bit crazy. Um, so I started working with you guys during stage four lockdown. So we weren't open. Um, I was pulling in a little bit of income because we were doing a little bit of online work. Um, but setting up some systems and some some things to in place so that we could reopen with a bang uh, when we first reopened that first month of reopening we did 18 nearly 19,000 um, was straight up it's a huge jump and then since then we've progressively been making a little bit more so in April so just last month we did 24,000 um, and so far we're, we're not even halfway through May yet and we're at 12,000 already um, so we're probably on track to go 26 27,000 at the moment so it has yeah, more than doubled what I was doing pre-COVID. 
incredible. Now, you, you mentioned that you put some systems in place. Can you talk to us a bit about what they have been? Um, so we have checklists for absolutely everything now. Um, so it makes it easy when the staff come in for work, they know exactly what they need to do to open and close the clinic. Uh, and then they've got daily, weekly and monthly tasks that we need to complete. Um, those tasks involve different marketing activities, um, connecting with old clients, people that you know, haven't been in for a little while. There's your, your classic, you know, cleaning and looking after the clinic kind of tasks and stuff as well. Um, but so we, we have these checklists up in our staff room and we tick off when they're actually done. We have, we have our weekly tasks and our monthly tasks and we actually tick off an initial who's done those tasks to making sure that they're, they're done um, when, when they're meant to be done. Doing proper advertising now, I was relying a lot on word of mouth and the gyms because I had come from a, a gym environment. I had connected with lots of other local gyms as well. We were just relying on those gyms to throw us clients. Um, so we've now set up um, systems to do regular um, social media posting and advertising as well and we're about to start going into the google advertising too so i've got my admin at the moment watching the, the google ads training videos that you guys have uh, and she's going to be putting some google ads in place uh, and another thing that i've just put in place as well is actual staff training so since i've hired so many new staff um, i've now set in set up a, a process of you know, when I interview someone, here's what I do. When I hire them, here's what I do. Here's the training they need to do. I've been creating some video training of, um, you know, how, how things work in the clinic and stuff so that when a new staff member comes on board, just everything's there and they can they can get started straight away without being like, did I tell you this? Did I remember that? Like just having having all these all these checklists has probably been one of the main things that I've, that I've introduced. I think having a checklist is amazing. We, we talk about this in terms of osteopathy or in the body, that structure governs function. You know, when you don't have to then spend time, effort and energy making sure that your staff have turned that light off and put that heater on and done this and, oh, have you checked that? Have you checked that? We're no longer micromanaging. It's much easier to let go um, and know that things are done in a really great way. What was that first like for you as somebody who was used to doing literally everything uh, in the clinic and there's a kind of there can be a special significance is attached with being able to be you know be in the know and be the one person that knows everything and that go-to person what was it like for you to kind of ugh, let go of that and pass that on to someone else initially it's really scary and really really hard especially since I'm a very I'm a very structured person naturally and I like to know yep everything's been done and everything's been done and I had this mental checklist of yeah I, I know that I was doing it all so putting it on paper and having a visual in the staff room so that I can actually see that it's being done even though it's not me doing it has been it's it's kind of been very um relieving it's been <laughs> it's been quite nice especially especially with my admin staff just being able to handle so much over to them and knowing that it's still getting done. Um, it's, it's been, it's been such a relief and taken a lot of pressure off my shoulders. Um, it's been, yeah, really, really helpful. <laughs> Highly recommend. And <laughs> and it, exactly. And it, it's one of those things. And I think we've had this conversation a few times. It's like, why do you think you have to do it? You've just written your plan of your three months. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, now I've got all this work to do. It's like, what if you didn't? Why can't you get an admin to do that? That's part of the joy of having, you know, we have a, we do have lots of elements to our program. One of them is this amazing portal that people forget to look at. Uh, but it's basically got all the training that James and I've ever created uh, for running a massage business and running creating online programs and all sorts of stuff in there, um, which we update if something's either out of date or you need something. If there's something we haven't got, then we'll get someone in to do interviews and case studies and things like that. So what like one of the things that I love being able to say to the therapist that when you've got admin is get your ad give your admin login at the reception desk and get them to watch the training on how to set up your AdWords or how to do your Facebook stuff or how to send your first email and, and things like that and it's it does because then all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh all now all my list is actually getting done this is amazing who would yep. It's actually quite fun watching her sit there, watching your videos and taking notes. It's like, oh, what's she going to do next? It's quite exciting. But one of, <laughs> probably one of my fav favorite trainings from the portal is, I think it was the time management series and going through what can you outsource and you know, where are you spending your time and do you really need to do that? And, you know, can, can you outsource it? One of the best things to outsource was laundry. 
<laughs> I couldn't imagine keeping up with the laundry now with 10 therapists. Like that would be absolutely nightmarish. Um, so yeah, laundry was a good thing <laughs> to outsource. <laughs> I'm glad we don't do that in house. <laughs> it's, it's such a rite of passage. You have to do laundry. It's part of what we do in our clinics. And then it's so lovely to be like, and now I don't do that anymore. It just arrives and it's all clean and we just fold it, put it away. Oh, best oh, ever. No, no, no. Laundry lady folds it for me. I don't even fold. Even better. It's just amazing. I love that. <laughs> um, so, Jasmine, let's talk a little bit about pricing and charging for your clinic. Uh, we've had several, I call them UTMs, or it stands for an undie tightening moment that we've had. As we're hearing, you're a very structured and ordered person um, and had probably priced yourself in a structured, ordered, and very logical way initially as well. Um, and then my job is to kind of come in like a little bit of a wrecking ball uh, and kind of break that down. So, anything that's not working, as you can hear, there's a lot of things that Jasmine has used to her advantage both in the training but also beforehand um, and usually the question I'll ask people is how's it working for you and if it's working really well we keep that behavior whatever's working and then if it's not if something's not working then we look at what do we need to do to change it so let's talk just a bit about what you're charging now as opposed to what you were charging before so when I first signed up with you guys I'm pretty sure I was charging I think it was 90 an hour um, and at, at my clinic, we've got a membership program. So people can sign up to be a member with us and they get $5 off every treatment. So it was either $85 or $90. Um, now I've done, I've done two price rises since starting the program. So I think it's in the, nine, in the last nine months, we've had two price rises. Uh, when I first signed up with you was when we did our first price rise because it was convenient that we were the clinic was closed at the time with stage four lockdown. So when we reopened, here was the new price. And I put it up to $100 um, and 95 for members. So we did a $10 price increase. Um, no one batted an eye. <laughs> it was, I think, I, I felt comfortable doing it as well because I think we, we had a really good excuse to blame COVID. Like we haven't had income for the last, you know, three months. We, uh, we need help. Um, so that price rise was really, really easy to do. And then I've literally just done another price rise, I think two or three weeks ago. Um, I didn't even tell anyone that I was doing the price rise. One of my staff members actually asked for a pay rise and I was like, hmm, what if they all ask for a pay rise and I'm a bit screwed? Um, I guess I better, <laughs> you know, figure out how I can, you know, be making sure that I'm, I'm looking after my staff and, and still making money at the same time. Um, so I just on the spot was like, okay, we're doing a price rise. I went into, we use Clinico, our booking software, went into Clinico and just updated everything um, by $5. And yeah, just told all my staff, just by the way, I've done this. I've ordered some new price, price lists. They haven't arrived yet, but we're, we're doing it. Um, just tell all your clients, look, we've had a price rise, um, but you didn't hear about it. So we'll give you the old price today, but from your next appointment, you know, this is gonna be the new price. Um, I think I've had one person complain about it, but that's been that's fine. Out of the, the hundreds that come through the door, I'm, I'm okay to only lose one. Um, one client was actually like, "Oh, okay, charge me the new price now." I'm like, "Oh, okay, like that. That's nice." Um, so I'm now yeah, a hundred, no, hundred and five, and then a hundred for members, and my initial consult's one hundred and fifteen. Um, which is something I'd never charged extra for as well. That was that was one of the things we did at the start was charge extra for initial consult. So yes, yeah, so 115 initial, 105 for a uh, one hour. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the things that we did uh, as part of working with money and, you know, inc one of the things we work on is, yes, we want to increase prices and, and things like that so that we can start to actually make profit because we know that if you're charging GST and you're hiring people, unless you're charging $99 Australian, there is actually no profit in there and that we can argue about this so the cows come home. But at the end of the day, you, uh, as a business owner, you need to be paid for your time, effort, energy and risk that's involved in leasing a commercial space, fitting it out, the marketing, the advertising, the in, you know, investment of business coaching, all that kind of stuff, which people often don't think about when they're like, oh, I'm only getting 30 or 40 bucks an hour. It doesn't seem like it's very much. And there's other therapists. It's like, yeah, we go home and bathe in our own money. No, not really. Um, what we do is actually run a business really, really effectively um, and have a look and go, well, if someone's asking for a price rise, uh, sorry, a pay rise, firstly, can we afford it? And that's the right way to, to look at it. Secondly, um, are they hitting KPIs? 
and if so great and thirdly if all if i agree that yes they're worth it then how am i actually going to fund this rather than i'll just take less profit or don't take a wage um, etc and that's how a lot of business owners think and so part of what we've been working on with you jasmine is ensuring that you make those great decisions it's something that you're very good at doing again that nice structured logical brain works really well um you also bought a house. You guys have bought your first home, which has been very exciting in the last few months. And there was kind of a season where you were buying a house, getting rid of another clinic and investing in another clinic. Um, talk us a bit about that process, what it was like for you and some of the uh, challenges and interesting patterns that we found out and discovered along that journey. Yeah. So when I first signed up with you guys, you I think one of the questions was, do you pay yourself? And I didn't. Um, I kind of, you know, all the money that the business earned just went into the business account and then I would just buy things from that. It was quite convenient that being a home-based business, the business paid for all the rent and everything. So I felt like that was my income. I paid for the rent and the bills, but I never actually gave myself an income. Um, so that's something that I actually started doing, which was a little bit exciting. It's like, oh, look, I get my own wages and, and the business is still surviving. Plus I get some money for me, which is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, so we funny that when I actually started paying myself, we uh, were able to come up with a deposit for a house and uh, and we had to had to then pay we paid an eighty thousand dollar deposit and uh, I like money. I like set by the way, the fact that you could do that rock on. <laughs> I like seeing my bank account with these nice big numbers and it was a very emotional time when I was told I had to pay that money to the conveyancer. To, <laughs> so she initially told me I needed to pay $60,000 for this deposit and then another 20000 later on. And um, big amounts of money just scare me a little bit. And so I paid that $60,000 deposit in 12 increments, 12 separate $5,000 payments. I transferred $5,000 every day, just so that it made me feel a little bit better that there's still money in my account and I'm only losing five grand at a time and not just here's 60. Um, <laughs> So Leash laughs at me, but yeah, this is something that we've been working on because in moving to this new commercial space, I had to pay a $6,000 bond and um, I increased my bank limit and I did it all in one go. <laughs> Who knew you could do that? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> because what I actually said to you when I kind of reflected back and as a coach, this is my job, how much time effort and energy did you invest in that kind of 12 it's like that's two or three weeks worth of time having to think oh have I done it today no okay like I'm like and you can't pay other bills at the same time because it's you, you're chunking up your one transfer I'm like as opposed to just even if you ring the bank get them to increase the limit for 24 hours and then put it back like beyond, that idea hadn't even crossed your mind and I'm like you're a logical person and and again what I love about you is when I reflect back you just go ah. Oh. Yeah, I see what you did there. Okay. <laughs> I love your ability to take it on board. You do take on board feedback really well and you always grow from it, which is exactly what we expect and what we want. Um, but what I'm, what I'm really enjoying and what I think is really powerful, especially for those listening to this, is that whatever stories we have around money, whether it's, you know, for some people it can be, it's certainly not in your case, Jasmine, but it can be like, I don't deserve it or I'm not good enough or, um, you know, I, I, don't, I couldn't possibly charge that because what will people think of me um, and that kind of stuff. Those will play out in the way that we charge uh, for our services. However, just because we don't have some of those operating doesn't mean we don't have some weird, strange stories about transferring large chunks of money because it's not that your money is going down. You're actually paying for an investment because obviously housing prices increase. Now, what's interesting about that to me is that I don't believe that you can generate great amounts of income if you can't also be comfortable spending to invest in large amounts of income. And when people often, sometimes people do, like you, you and I had a great conversation about what we charge for the program. Um, and it's like, the reason we do it is because we want to be able to help people to grow into abundance. And you can't do that if you're just paying a little tiny bit each week. It's got to be something that actually, you've got to see the money coming out and going, yeah, choose that. You know, And, and also it's a great reminder, well, well, crap, is there anything I haven't done? Yes, we'll get it done because I want to make sure that this investment is actually being linked to great rewards. 
And I think that, you know, our money stories play out in the most bizarre and interesting ways for lots of different people. And when we can understand, well, we can create that awareness. So awareness creates the possibility of a different choice. Oh, I've got this strange. I just thought everyone did that. And you look around, I remember you looking around the table, everyone's like, no, (laughs) we would never do that. Oh, okay. So maybe I'm the only one who has this strange thing. Great. But if I loosen my grip on that control, what else can actually happen? And the fact that you can now say, well, I've doubled my business, I've more than doubled my, my monthly income. You cannot generate that kind of income with profit and paying yourself if you don't have, if you haven't increased, as Zach talks about, one of our coaches, that internal thermostat around money. Um, yeah, definitely. So- I, um, I now have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Mondays because that's the day that I do payroll. And so it's like, yeah, there's all this money sitting in my account at the start of a Monday. And then I have to pay like three to four to five grand of, uh, <laughs> yeah. of wages. And it's like you know, a little bit of pulling on the heartstrings of like <laughs> money I'm going out of my account but at the same time it's really exciting because it's I can afford to pay my staff this and you know this is this is funding them and I'm supporting them and it's really kind of a little bit of a thrill to do payroll like look how much I can afford to pay um yeah a little bit scary but a little bit exciting at the same time (laughs) and that's that's exactly as it should be it is really exciting to be able to share that blessing you know and passing that on and I think that's what really good business ownership looks like is that it's not that we are bathing in our own money but it is that we're generating an abundance in our lives that we can share with others so that you know post COVID post a you know global pandemic you're able to employ 10 people and give them access to work and a place where they're being mentored valued taken care of etc and they're all employed by the way um, which is also a really great way that you've chosen to move forward in your business. Um, Jasmine, talk to us a little bit about what's changed in terms of time blocking for your family as well and how has this played out? You've got two gorgeous young kids. Um, so how has this played out for you over the last few months? Yeah, so I've got a two-year-old and an eight-year-old. Um, two-year-old, he doesn't sleep. So um, sleep deprivation is a very, very big thing. And so when I'm now, you know, I'm working full time in this clinic and trying to trying to survive on uh, not a huge amount of sleep, it, it has been a challenge. So one of the one of the things that did help was setting up my perfect week and be like, right, you know, how am I going to make sure I get everything done? And you know, what what's going to what what is my perfect week and, and how do I want things to be? And I'm really quite blessed. I've got a very supportive husband, um, and he he is amazing with um, with helping me out. Like he he doesn't just leave everything at the house to me. Like you you, you know the, the classic marriage where the wife stays at home and does everything. We're both equal income earners, and so we we share all the tasks, which is I'm really lucky in that regard. Um, but I did find that especially moving into a commercial space. I was not keeping up with the stuff at home. When I was in a home-based clinic, I could put on that load of washing. I could do some dishes in between clients. Like I was keeping up with things. Um, but moving to commercial, it's like homes, you know, a, a drive, like I can't just quickly pop home and just do stuff. Um, so that I've, I've had to kind of evaluate, you know, how, how am I going to juggle all of this? So we have hired um a nanny slash ha- uh, babysitter uh slash housekeeper whatever you want to call it um she comes in two days a week for four hours she does an hour of cleaning um she goes and picks up my kids from school so I don't have to worry about pickup on those days um picks them up from school and daycare hangs out with them plays with them takes them to the park and then she cooks dinner so when I get home at six o'clock dinner's ready house is clean kids have been entertained and wiped out and it's like okay that's helpful <laughs> so outsourcing in that regard as well to um to, to accept that or understand that I can't do everything I can't juggle everything and I do need help um has that that's been it's, it's been really nice to have that that backup at home as well um and I've asked my mum for help as well so mum comes one day a week and she does everything on that day as well which is yeah so the whole it takes a village to raise a child <laughs> And well, it takes a village to raise to raise a business. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, I think we, we get stuck in this trap of thinking that we have to wear our undies on the outside, throw a cape around our neck and have to do everything. And I, 
I love the fact that you have so willingly accepted help, whether it's your admin that you've brought on board. And no, bearing in mind, this wasn't just an overnight thing. This has been, you know, over months going, you know what, this bit isn't working. What do I do? Have you thought of, you know, you can actually employ a nanny in your business and the, to, to care for your kids and things like that. I was like, oh, I haven't thought of that. Great. You know, all of a sudden you've, you can start to shift and change and tweak to create life on your terms that may not work for someone who prefers to be home outside of school hours fantastic create a business that works for that um, for other people who don't have kids maybe you don't have a, a supportive family like jasmine does or you might have family that works away like a, a partner that works away um, a couple of months couple of weeks a month um, you know being able to even think about the fact that you're like it's just if it was two days a week I could literally be at the clinic till later that would change the game for me in terms of you know business work and development uh, as well as being in a treat a little bit later then all of a sudden I've got um, you know and this is all done so I walk in uh, you know I, I heard another business mentor once talk about um, just like just imagine that I'm a I'm a, a man growing up in the 60s that's the kind of level of service that I would like <laughs> Like, I love that idea that, you know, like everything's just done for me. Thank you very much. Um, shoot me down for sexist conversations later on. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, the fact that you're able to ask for help, accept the help that's given, put the right people around you to help support you and fund all of that just quietly, you know, knowing that, yes, okay, you've got to transfer X amount per week, but you've actually got that money sitting there, number one. Uh, and number two, you're you're not just paying for stuff that's while you're working your guts out, you know, you're actually paying for the things that are going to support your lifestyle. So one of the conversations we had recently was about you stepping out of hands-on treatment um, in order to be able to mentor some of your teens. So talk to us a bit about how that's going. Yeah, well, just before I do that, I just want to do quickly touch on as well with, with hiring the, the nanny and, and having that help at home, that, has been a bit of a process as well and I have gone through a few different nannies to find the perfect one because yeah like you said I'm mentoring students at work I don't want to have to be teaching the person at my house here's how I want you to do this here's how yeah and I just want someone that can just go in and do the job so I have it has been a little bit of a process to find the right person I think fingers crossed I found the right person now um, but that that's been a bit of a process just to make sure I'm finding someone that's ticking all of those boxes so it's been it's been a process but it's, been fun <laughs> my daughter said to me last night she's like I really like Amy I want her to stay don't 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 make her leave okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah at work so in the last I think month I have hired four new therapists um two of them have are qualified remedial therapists and two of them are still students still studying their diploma but the two that have just qualified, they did a lot of their study online during COVID. So they didn't have, like they've got all the knowledge, but they didn't have a lot of the practical hands-on, here's how to apply that knowledge. Um, so what I've decided to do is to take myself off the books treatment-wise. Um, I was treating about 20 clients a week uh, and I gave all my clients one week's notice and <laughs> said I'm taking all of May and June off treating um, so you guys can see my new therapists. Um, a few of my clients were very unhappy about that so I said well let's book you in at a time because I'm still going to be around I'm not taking a holiday let's book you in at a time where I'm going to be in treatment with the newbies now I'll, you know then you get a forehand to treatment you get me and you get them like you know it's even going to be better and so yeah with um with the with the new staff I'm here at the at the time of their shift and I'm jumping into treatments with them I'm teaching them as much as I possibly can about how I would do things um and just making sure that they're confident in their skills and teaching them more and um I've been getting some really good feedback so far from clients as well as the staff. They're really appreciating the, the mentoring. Um, but it was a bit of a scary step for me to take. And so I called Alicia and I was uh, in a little bit of a, I don't know if I should do this. I've had this idea, you know, and it's been, it's been really nice to have the backup from someone that I can trust um, to go, no, you've, you've got all these systems in place. You, you know, you can do it. Keep an eye on the figures, you know, jump back into treatment if you need to for the financial side of it. But yeah, knowing that I've, I've got that support, whereas if I had asked somebody else, they would have been, why would you do that? Like, you know, you're going to lose so much money, you know, that's a dumb idea kind of thing. It was really nice to get the support and the, um, what's the word, the encouragement that I needed to take that step. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's been really, really nice. And I actually haven't told you this, Leash. So I've now been, what's the day? The 12th of May. So I've been on leave for two, leave for two weeks. Um, I'm now actually thinking of going back to study and doing my Maya therapy, my advanced diploma. And I wouldn't have been able to consider that before because I had all of these clients relying on me for treatments. But it's like, they're actually seeing my other stuff and they're doing okay. I have a bit more time on my plate now. I could actually do this um, course. I was thinking I might have to wait a few years when my son's in school and, you know, can have a little bit more time, but it's like, I could actually do this now. Like <laughs> it's freed up my time a little bit more that I can actually explore some more options. Um, so it's been a bit exciting. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> How exciting. That's amazing. What, yeah, what an amazing outcome to be able to. And sometimes we don't know, we don't know what we don't know until we get to it. Like it's like um, you're not going to know the outcome until you've actually jumped in outside your comfort zone. You know? And once you do that, you're like, oh, now there's actually really a whole lot of different possibilities sitting here um, that I, I didn't even know existed until I took that step and rang my clients and sorted them out, etc. Now it's like, oh, this is easy. You know, this is really, really fun. Um, yeah so at the end of June when I get back to doing some treatment I might only see five maybe ten people a week and that's just because I want to see them or they've been patiently waiting for me to come back but I'm not going to go back to the same level of treatment that I was doing um, and the business should hopefully be ticking along fine and still making the profit that I need so yeah so exciting and when you have those right things in place this is exactly what can happen you know, when you have the right systems, you have the right mindset, you have that internal thermostat around money. Um, and I think that's, that is, you make a really great point about being able to call someone that you trust um, for that encouragement is to be able to go, okay, well, let's, first of all, let's have a look at what are, what are you not looking at? I've got this really great idea. Great. What are we not looking at? Um, and then kind of go through not so much pros and cons, but more like, well, what's the worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is you're going to go backwards financially. That's the only, that is literally the only problem or challenge I can see with this. So you know your numbers. And if you didn't know your numbers, I'd be a little bit more concerned, but you totally know your numbers. And I'm like, so that's your base minimum. Don't drop below this. So you don't have to worry. You're not kind of getting to break even point. Great. And as long as you keep hitting that, rock on. Like there's, I don't say that there's a problem with it at all. Realistically, it was only two treatments anyway for May and June. So rock on. And I think that is the really powerful thing because you're not spinning your wheels on that. You're not kind of thinking, I wonder if I should do that. You know, and six months goes by and your staff are kind of, they're okay, but they're not awesome. You know, you think, well, I keep them, why I keep them? I don't know. I probably don't have time to treat them, you know, train them all that stuff. It's like, no, you know what? I've had this idea within two weeks. I'm actually, I'm actioning it. I'm doing it and seeing the fruits of my labor from that because you're investing in a team that is going to, you know, definitely continue to take your business into the future. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's, yeah, it's going to be really, really good and, I know, so yeah, knowing my break-even point of we have to do a minimum of 45 treatments a week to be able to make sure I pay all the bills, all the wages, everything covered. And so at the moment, we're sitting at about 70, 75. So I know I've got a little bit of leeway that even if a few of my clients are like, no, nah, we're not seeing you until you get back, you know, I've, I've got 30 clients worth of leeway there um, to, yeah, to make sure that I can I can invest in, in the future of my staff and make sure that they, they're happy and clients are happy and you know they're, they're going to be the best that they can be amazing jasmine if anyone was listening to this and was thinking about stepping into the six-figure program what wonderful advice would you give definitely write pros and cons lists and uh you'll see that the pros outweigh the cons <laughs> um and hopefully that the hearing what my main con was was the financial side of it um but I can I can definitely say for sure now that I'm really happy that I made the jump to to paying more for coaching because I I can really see I can actually see the results that I've gotten out of it um, and even even not even just the business coaches the support that you get from everyone else and that everyone else that's doing the program that's really really valuable as well so definitely um, write write your pros and cons list so that you know for sure what you're getting into and why um, but if it's a financial barrier that's holding you back it is worthwhile the investment. Love it. Thank you so much, Jasmine. It's been awesome to chat with you. It's been beautiful to watch your journey too because you're just so willing to take on board feedback and take action and move forward. Uh, it's just, it's delightful to be able to have someone so practical and so willing to just take action. And which is- I like you're moving... UTMs. 
<laughs> those you lucky you do like those UTMs. <laughs> it's like because we throw something at you, we're like, oh, you can literally see the undies tied, and then she's like, yeah, okay, fine, I'll do okay, it. I'll do it. I'll do it next week. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we just have ah, uh, that two week next week was too long. I did it yesterday. Um, <laughs> you know, I love that, and that's exactly as it should be because that is how we grow in business, and that's how everything works together to be able to create a business that you are, as we said, living life on your terms, where you can find what is the criteria I want, what's the action I have to take, and you actually make that happen. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. We really appreciate it. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing what Muscle Melbourne Muscle Medics is going to be doing even more into the future. Yeah, watch the space. <laughs>